Hi, today's movie is the 1923 production of The Hunchback of Notre Dame starring Lon Chaney. Now, I only recently realized that I'd never actually seen this. I was very familiar with the version starring Charles Lawton, which is fantastic, but this one is completely new to me. So what am I expecting? I'm hoping it's got a sensational performance from the great Lon Chaney and some of the amazing makeup that he was famous for. I'm hoping it's going to be an amazing drama, a high budget production of its time, but I'm not sure. Let's have a look and find out. So I read that this was actually quite a high budget production of its time. And Lon Chaney, I guess, was one of the biggest stars of that period. I don't know that I've seen a moving credit list from this period before. The ones I've seen have been static. Well, if that's a set they recreated, they did an amazing job. Wow, that's a huge number of extras. That seems a bit much. <laughs> yeah, give me a good kick. Oh, wow. That was a sensational shot. Ooh, look at that makeup. So my understanding is that Lon Chaney was famous to, for doing all these amazing makeups himself. Look at that. Ooh, in the hairy hands. This is very different from the makeup I remember from the Charles Lawton movie. Oh, he's deaf and half blind. I don't remember the Charles Lawton one being half blind, but it's a long time since I saw it. Ooh, that milky eyeball is pretty disturbing. The teeth. Can you imagine a famous actor today who did his own special effects makeup? This really is lavish. Look at all those horsemen. This set is bananas. I can't believe they built this amazing replica of Notre Dame. Oh, was that a back projection shot? Kind of looked like it. Yeah. How are they, how are they doing that in 1923? <laughs> Cannot believe this set. This is crazy. The detail. Wow. If you saw this made now and it was all CGI cathedral, it wouldn't be anywhere near as impressive. What are these two baddies up to? I'm sure the occupational health and safety people would not let a major star do all this climbing on a high set today. Wow, he's very athletic, isn't he? No stunt double here. He'd bought her from the gypsies. I'm not clear why that woman was screaming at her or why she's seemingly imprisoned. Oh, flashback. 
Oh, is this young child going to turn out to be Esmeralda in years to come? What is this thing about gypsies stealing children? Interesting that so far this film does seem to be a lot about prejudice, the prejudice towards Quasimodo, towards gypsies. I mean, clearly this woman's child is going to turn out to be Esmeralda, I'm sure. Wow, great costumes. Look at these sets. There are a lot of characters in this story. Look at that outfit. That's sensational. Oh. Hashtag hair goals. So I guess this story was written after the French Revolution, about pre-revolutionary times. And it's really presenting the king as this decrepit idiot, but also a tyrant at the same time. Oh, Lon Chaney looks so different. I would not have recognised him from other roles that I've seen him in. His makeup is that good. Just keep introducing more and more characters. Oh, is that a goat? <laughs> oh dear. There's a lot going on in this film already. They've got multiple sort of narrative strands going on. Everyone's after Esmeralda. Creepy. So Esmeralda is his friend's adopted or bought daughter. And he's creeping after her. What are they up to? I don't remember this from the Charles Lawton version. And I haven't read the book. And the Archdeacon's brother is going to let him take the fall for this attempted abduction of Esmeralda. It's nice. I thought this film would be anti-monarchist. You know, they're portraying the king as a tyrant, but they're really portraying the, the people in the lower strata of society as pretty bad as well. Oh, heavy symbolism there. Esmeralda is the butterfly caught in this spider's lair of Phoebus the womanizer. Crikey. <laughs> he doesn't waste time. <laughs> so they were in a, an inn or a pub when he was trying to take her top off. That's nice. Interesting that this film is so concerned with um, hierarchies. They've got the king and all the people who he's a tyrant over, but then they've got this um, thieves' court. And this man is the king of the thieves. And he does seem a bit of a tyrant as well. So is the film saying that the tone is set from the top down and the poor people are behaving like the aristocrats because that's what the aristocrats do to them? Or is it saying that all people are just awful? <laughs> I don't know if I disagree. They do return to this theme again and again. The slave suffering for his master's crime. Slaves and masters kings and wretches 
It's like a world in which everyone is brutalized and everyone is kind of half savage because of it. It's a bit of a saucy top, the whipping guy is wearing. <laughs> Do we really need to see his nipples? Ooh. So I was not sure when I saw him with his shirt on whether he was wearing padding underneath to make his arms look more muscular. I mean, he's obviously got a back prosthetic on there. Are the arms padded too? Looks like he's got some kind of prosthetic on his whole body, his whole chest. That's some pretty ambitious special effects makeup for the period. Interesting that they didn't show the whipping in this version. I'm sure they did show it in the other versions. Maybe that was just a bit too graphic for the period. It does look more like some kind of body makeup when you see it there, the texture of it. Look at Cheney's face. Such an amazing physical performer. Another fantastic set. These costumes are pretty amazing too. Fantastic design in this movie. Wow, I did not recognize Esmeralda in her fancy getup. What about his fiance? French do love their revolutions. This guy playing Phoebus reminds me a lot of Mandy Patinkin in The Princess Bride. <laughs> do you think you can take Esmeralda for your plaything? Asks the man who bought her as a baby from a gypsy. A lot of revolutionary energy in this movie. When I see men in period costume wearing tights, I always think it looks like women wearing leggings now. This comedy scene is dragging a little bit, I have to say. For a film set in Notre Dame Cathedral, this is the first bit of religious uh, themes or elements we've had in the story, Esmeralda thinking about becoming a nun. Why does everyone think they can keep buying her? Now her stepfather's, or now her adopted father's friend is trying to buy her from him, buy her hand in marriage. Creepy. Of course you'd have huge arms because he's ringing bells all day. Why didn't I think of that before? <laughs> Because that's where dumbbells originated from, because bell ringers all had these amazing ripped arms. I was wondering why they were portraying him so muscular. Now I get it. Great sets, great angles. I'll be honest, I had expected to see more of Lon Chaney in this movie. So far, we haven't seen him a lot. They're giving a lot of screen time to these other storylines. Oh, this guy's a super creep. Do men plight troths anymore? 
Oh no! He actually stabbed him. God. And once again, they didn't show the stabbing, just like they didn't show the whipping. Seem to be taking a pretty conservative approach to how graphic they can get. Oh, and she's going to be blamed for it because she's poor and a gypsy. Wow. The epic scale of this is amazing, although I think that might be some kind of matte, matte painting. But it was hard to tell, so I guess that shows how good it was, if it was a matte painting. How is this what he wanted? He's not going to get Esmeralda if she's executed for murdering Phoebus. Oh no. Don't start talking about witchcraft. I guess the point that's being made here is that if you were poor back then you're at the mercy of the church and the state. Yikes. This doesn't look good. Ooh. What are they going to do? Crush her feet together? That's horrible. The detail in this set, the bed, everything. It shows you what a big business making movies was even in 1923. They would spend this much money on it. I don't get this villain's motivation in seeing Esmeralda framed for stabbing Phoebus because he doesn't get anything out of it unless it's if he can't have her no one can have her but wow those cheeks how has he got that effect if it's just something he's built up on his face he's done an amazing job I mean, is that a set or is it a set with a backdrop at the back? It's really hard to tell. It looks so good. Oh, it's the bad guy. Oh, lying to her that her beloved is dead. I really hope Cosimodo is going to get more to do in the film because I really want to see more of him. Wow, look at him go! Wow! That's a great dramatic setup with this lady who doesn't know that Esmeralda's actually a daughter. I'm guessing she tore off the pendant. Victor Hugo sure knew what he was doing. Amazing storytelling. There's just so much going on. Oh, she hasn't died. She has. She was so shocked she died. How will Esmeralda ever know that that was her real mother now? Wow, what a great shot. Oh.
This guy's got to get what's coming to him. Wow. Here we go, Revolution Time. Another epic set. They did an amazing job on this production. Bloody hell. Oof. I'm finding Lon Chaney's portrayal of Quasimodo somewhat less sympathetic than Charles Lawton's. But I do like the energy and, you know, physical vigour he brings to Quasimodo. Ooh. Quasimodo is not kidding. Look at those fires. That looks insanely dangerous. Oh! Oh boy, <laughs> that fire nearly fell on him. Bloody hell. Being showered in molten lead. <laughs> Will he be facing mass murder charges after all this? Oh boy, a scythe. <gasps> Did he just scythe that horse? <laughs> That's not very nice. I think he just applied the scythe to the horse's legs. But it happened so fast. It's a pretty brutal film, really. And it is, it is a kind of godless film, for a film with a church at its centre. Oh God. When he's deaf, how's he going to hear her screaming for help? She's really the only religious figure in this film, apart from the Archdeacon. He needs to go over the side. Don't stop him. close-ups of Quasimodo. I want to see his face more. Oh, That was sad. of Notre Dame wasn't really anything like I expected. I guess I'm very familiar with the Charles Lawton version, but this one does have a different feel to me. It is really epic in its scale, in the scope of its storytelling, the sets, the cast, everything is done on an epic scale, and it's very impressive in that regard. I think what I was hoping for though was more focus on Quasimodo, because that's how I remember the Charles Lawton version. He was more central to the story and uh, much more of an emo emotional focus in the story. In this version though, I felt that Quasimodo was more of a remote figure to the viewer. We don't see him that much. When we see him, it's often from far away. I felt that was a bit sad because I wanted to see more of the detail and the nuance of Lon Chaney's performance. Lon Chaney's makeup is extraordinary, his physical acting is amazing, his athleticism. But I did feel that his interpretation of Quasimodo was more wild, it was more sort of animalistic, uh, with a focus on the monstrosity of his appearance. 
Whereas compared to uh, Charles Lawton's interpretation, um, I felt Lawton was much more gentle and sympathetic in the role. As an interpretation of The Hunchback of Notre Dame, I don't think I found it personally as satisfying or as touching as the Charles Lawton version. Is it a horror film? Is it a historical drama? I think it's much more of a historical drama than it is horror because it doesn't really have much um, horror in it. The horror elements are really Quasimodo's um, deformed appearance and all of the horrible things that happen in the um, siege of the cathedral at the end. Some of those are pretty horrible. It does have a lot of interesting themes and a sort of political subtext, which I guess is probably more fully developed in Victor Hugo's novel. And in some ways it reminds me of Victor Hugo's other fantastic story, Les Miserables, in that it has all these amazing characters and storylines that interweave, um, and it's set against that backdrop of a revolution that's bubbling up. The Hunchback of Notre Dame is entertaining, uh, but it is quite long at about an hour and 40 minutes. So I don't think I could recommend this unless you're really in the mood for something that's on that epic level. If you've enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.